yeah big up everybody in the stream chat big up big up big up join in join in join in make sure you're joining in let's go with this video first let's see what he says here all right so it looks like tom segura and burt kreischer have pretty much given up on the two bears 1k podcast or at least the original format of it because it's been over a month at this point since they've released a podcast with both of them in it like the last one they did together was in september and the Whoa. previous six have been guest episodes which i think they just do because it only requires one of them and they're really busy touring and also i think bert still lives in la and tom lives in austin so they're barely keeping this podcast together and you can tell it's definitely on the back burner for them and also to be fair i don't think they're they're falling out though i just think they're just both making it's probably a a, a great time because i feel like Bert's made it a point already before, right? That he got jealous before when Tom was really successful and he wasn't. It's probably good. It's probably for the best that they're both making money at the same time. Because I couldn't imagine... Like, can you imagine how much difficult it would be to film a show with your friend when he's Bert and you're like some, you know, smaller comedian that's struggling to pay the bills? So it's probably for the best that they're both blowing up at the same time, like... They're both older guys too. I think Tom might be in his 50s as well. So they're middle-aged men. And they've... This is the only... T this is the... what Part of the reason why I think I, I kind of don't take Tom's like hill turn where he's, he's been a bit of a douche and he's kind of let the money get to his head. I don't let take it too much to heart is because Tom is only 44. No way, Josie. God damn it. That's a strong 44, isn't it? Okay, cool. Um, Anyway, shit, he's 44. Fuck. Okay, fair play. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, one reason why I don't think... One of the reasons why I don't think that Tom is doing that bad of his heel turn, what, why I understand it is because I feel like it's the one time in their career where they're ever going to have this level of fame. They're never going to be as famous as they are right now. So I understand why they are striking while the iron is hot. And they're basically trying to get as much as they can out of this moment. Whether it's movies, whether it's shows, whether it's going on tour. They're just trying to squeeze as much as they can out of it. And unfortunately for them, it happens at the same time that they were launching that podcast. Two days, I mean, what you call it? Two best, one cave, so not two days to try. And, you know, it started off pretty well on a good premise. And then it kind of fell off. But I think... I understand, you know, I kind of get it. And they're basically just trying to make it work in between time. Um, what are you guys saying here? Um, oh yeah, big up Austin Casey, big up Young Old Vibes, appreciate all of you here. Uh, Agar, are you going to get a copyright strike if you do Toontown? Now, it should be fine. Toontown should be fine. The copyright strike I got because of Chris and he's got a production company and shit, all that stuff. The Toontown stuff should be fine. I don't think he's, you know what I mean? And even if it is, I won't get a copyright strike, but they might just take the ad sense and I, I don't care about that stuff. I just want to watch along. But, I'm, I don't know. When it comes to YouTube, I treat it differently. I'm not really like bothered about the AdSense money and oh, if it's monetized. I just want to watch videos. I don't care if you take the money on the back end because it's your video, your content, and I'm reacting to it. Fair play. Take it all. I don't give a fuck. But it's just the, it's the like, they don't even let you view it. The video gets blocked or it gets deleted. It's like, come on, man. Like, I'm reacting to the content. It's already on there. I'm pushing people to it anyway. And I've got a small audience. Not as if I'm taking away any of your views. But anyway, whatever. Let's continue with the video. So to make it easier, they bank episodes. So they record a bunch in advance and then release them over a month or two. Like if they ever talk about any current events, it's usually something that happened around a month ago. Like the most recent episode with Colin Quinn, he brings up the Lauren Bobar Beetlejuice scandal thing where she was vaping at the play and then grew up your boyfriend. And he said it happened just the other day, but this happened back in mid-September. So their fans are definitely starting. Yo. How do you guys enjoy this? Do you guys enjoy this type of content when people backlog? I don't ever, I don't, the most I've ever done is with the Taz show. When I've done Taz, I might have recorded like three shows in one day and then I've dropped them all in a week, like Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But I've never done what these guys do where they literally record like whenever and they bank shows. So they record a podcast in fucking September and then drop it in November. Are you insane? That is so long in podcast terms, in content terms. That's crazy.
starting to lose interest and i think people are checking out because you know you could just tell this is on cruise control for bert and tom and they're just doing whatever to put out a podcast each week it doesn't matter what the quality is it doesn't matter if they're both there it doesn't matter if the podcast is over a month old they're just doing what they can to put out an episode each week and it sounds like a good amount of their fans would rather have the podcast so it definitely is a cash grab in it that's the thing if you're a fan of them there's no way else to spin this this is definitely a cash grab they could easily end the podcast, but because it makes too much money, because they still get good views, isn't it? Like, if I'm going to check them now, let me see. Let's see. Uh, two Bears, One Cave. I bet you the views are still quite high, because Two Bears, One Cave is on the Your Mum's House channel, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's on the Your Mum's House channel, too. So they get, on average, 200k videos. 200k views, sorry. On Two Bears, One Cave. 200k plus. So it's too profitable not to, like, kill it, basically. Yeah, they, they haven't got a single episode that's that's below 200k. Everything is 200k plus. Fuck, you know. Cast like every other week or just a couple times a month, as long as it went back to the original format. So you know it's pretty bad when people are saying they don't care to watch an episode unless Bert and Tom are together. Because usually if it was just Tom, people are like, oh, thank God Bert's not there. I can finally listen to this one without him interrupting every second. But now Yeah, exactly, Young Old Vibes. The laziness of comedians is beyond like and it's funny because i think we're all lazy right we would we'd all like to make the most money from doing the least amount of work most of us would it like that if that was an option but it's not so you just work hard and you try and make as much as you can to support yourself and your family wherever it may be but these guys they fucking talk to us about their work ethic or their work ethnic ad nauseum just beating us up in the head about how much they work about the craft about getting up on stage about doing sets and reps going on the road bang 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 but in the end when they get successful if anything they basically turn down the output and they just get into laziness mode they just go through the motions, whatever they can do, they do, but they don't ever really try and make the shows interesting, book interesting. That's why I give Theo Vaughn a lot of credit. Theo Vaughn a lot of credit. Theo could easily just rest on his laurels and just do his own solo pod, bank it, you know, go through the motions and make the money. But he pushes himself. He always gets interesting guests. The shows are always super funny. They're, they're recorded really well, lit well, sound well, all that good stuff. He spends a bunch of money on it anyway. Plus he stand up. So you can see he's actually grinding as opposed to the other guys. It's just like, they're literally going through the motions. You know what I mean? If they could get away with doing a, a fucking pod like Tim Dillon in their actual bed, they would actually do it. Now at this point, it sounds like fans are getting kind of sick of seeing guests and they'd rather just have Bert and Tom on the podcast because that's why they originally started listening to it and they want to listen to it because they want to laugh. You know, it's supposed to be a comedy. Exactly. And if you remember, sorry, I keep cutting them off. If you remember the first episode of Two Bears, One Cave, they were talking about never having guests anyway. That was the whole point. It was about having them two sit there and just shit you know shit talk make each other laugh and talk about you know their come up or whatever it may be but it was never meant to be a guest centric show that's why it was so successful in the beginning because there was some there's kind of like this weird dynamic where you know tom basically kind of was getting annoyed with bert bert would try and make tom laugh like that was kind of like their dynamic so they started off saying we're never gonna fucking have guests now they have all the guests comedy podcast but when it's Tom just sitting there interviewing another comedian about the industry, usually it's not very entertaining. It's not funny. I don't think they're really even trying to be funny most of the time. And it seems like Tom is starting to take himself more serious. But Bert, at least when he's on the podcast, he'll be saying a bunch of stupid and outrageous shit they can laugh at. So at least he provides some entertainment to the show. But usually when it's just Tom interviewing a comedian, it can be pretty boring. And like the most recent episode, even though Bert's not there, they still talked about him quite a bit. And those are probably the funniest parts of the podcast like towards the end colin quinn brought him up and tom started doing a bert impression and i'll give it to him this was pretty funny you could get a lot of money i'm just gonna sit man and go bert i love what you i love you what you're bringing is something because he does bring a whole energy that's amazing yes and, and a I'm lot of say, words they're not all coherent but there's right. a lot of words and i'm gonna say bert here's what we're gonna do with the act and he'll yeah. be like oh, i love this idea what, what is it <laughs> <laughs> say bert Shirt I'm, on or shirt off? <laughs> the shirt comes off. The shirt coming off is good. It's a nonverbal thing that's really beautiful. And at the end, the grand thing is going to be you taking your shirt off. I love it. 
No, Bert, it's not going to be cheap. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 good, good, good. Yeah, tell us what kind of price range are we in here? Um, and also in the beginning of the podcast, they're talking about Bert, and Tom mentioned how Bert is always asking him to do shows and go on tour and do guest spots and go on his cruise. But Tom, he turns all that down. He's never accepted any of his offers. And it sounds like he gets annoyed that Bert even asks him. And the way Tom talks about his cruise, it's like his worst nightmare, like the last thing he'd ever want to do. Probably because he doesn't want to have to interact with pores. But also it just sounds like overall he gets kind of sick of being around Bert. Like also at one point during the podcast, Tom mentions his- Oh, actually, let me see if I can find it. Did you guys see the video of the cruise actually? Let me see if I can find it. Please, let me see if I can find it. Let's see if Bert Crash will put on his fucking Twitter. That might be a good way to see it. But there was someone actually posted a video of the fucking cruise that he does. Oh my God. It looked rancid. I'm not too sure if this is your type of fun, but let me see if I can find it. No, that would have been if he broke off of e but he threw away a writing cane. Oh, he's going somewhere. Let's continue with the video. Stain for alcoholics and just like loud, obnoxious, drunk people, which is basically Bert's whole personality. <laughs> the the six seven show club gigs has really made a disdain for alcoholics and like or like for drunk behavior yes, yes. we're like i hate them i can be in a non-performance setting and when someone's drunk i just i just start to go like i just want to get the fuck out of here you know like that loud obnoxious shit yeah because you perform to it and you realize there's like there's almost no way to defeat it at a well, certain even point. so i'm sure bert and tom are isn't he talking about bert as well that's kind of mad isn't it <laughs> so good friends but maybe they are getting kind of sick of each other at this point or at least tom is getting sick of bert well, one person's becoming professional, right? Tom is basically trying to Joe Rogan himself and Bert's still firmly in the hacky, I drink booze, adult frat boy type of thing. I wonder if that's an actual, is that an actual personality or is that a character? Is, is Bert one of many in your, because don't, we don't really have a lot of them in the UK. We have lads. We have like lager lads, but they're just adults. But this this kind of persona, this kind of, um, personality you have in America where there's like it's a person that's been that hasn't refused to grow up basically he's still stuck in college he's still that party boy in college and he's in his 50s that's really odd again in the UK we have people here that are just like you know lager louts and stuff they drink a lot of beer they get a bit fucked up but you don't really have the personality of somebody that's like holding on to their school years in their 50s it's just like you're 50 now do you know what I mean no one gives a fuck but Burst unique in that in his head he still thinks he's that college kid you know that's a really smart bit about it um but yeah and maybe that's another reason why they haven't done a podcast together in over a month at this point and you know i'm sure this is why tom doesn't want to go on tour with him either because he just doesn't want to be around loud obnoxious drunk people exactly. like tom seems to be taking himself more seriously but bert he still acts like he's in college you know he's always gonna be a party animal even though I think he did stop drinking or he stopped drinking as much. I'm sure he still does drink, but I just don't think Tom is interested in dealing with his behavior anymore. And I think he's kind of outgrown him. Like Bert, he mentioned on another podcast that if it weren't for Two Bears, One Cave, they would barely talk anymore. And then just the way Tom talks about working with Bert outside of the podcast, it sounds like his worst nightmare. Like Tom said that he told Bert they could give him all the money they made from the cruise and there's still no chance he would do it, which I guarantee Bert did not handle well. Well, I mean, it is pretty insulting if Jesus Tom said Christ. that to him. And it's kind of insulting to his fans. And it's funny because Tom's acting like they have completely different fan bases. And he's offended that Bert would say that they have a similar audience. But I mean, they definitely do. Like, obviously, they do a huge podcast together and their fans overlap. But I think Tom's trying to act like he's above Bert. And Bert asking him to go do this cruise ship show is ridiculous. And it's funny because just in my last video, I was talking about how it's surprising Tom manages to put up with Bert. Bert. But during this podcast, you could tell Tom lets it out, and he's definitely annoyed with Bert constantly asking him to do shows. And this gets brought up because Colin Quinn mentions how Bert's always asking him to do stuff, and he always turns it down. And it sounds like he kind of gets annoyed by it, but he's more polite about it than Tom is. 
Yeah. And they said, Bert wants you to come and do a couple of guest spots on the tour. Yeah. And my manager, my agent, they're both like, Bert wants you to come. These are great tours. I go, I'm not going to do Bert's. Look, here's the thing about comedy. I love Bert. Yeah. But I'm saying, it's like anything else. Not everybody has the same audience. No, they don't. You know what I mean? That's yes. just, nobody even thinks about this. Like, no. hey, you're exposed to a different audience. Yeah, an audience is going to be like, first of all, they probably have a vague idea who I am. They're not interested. I'm not into Everybody go their way, separate way. You know what I mean? So when yeah. you see Bert, yeah. tell him, thank you. Stop making offers. It's, so, I'm not going to be saying no the rest of my life. <laughs> By the way, Jesus just so you know, Christ. I have rejected everything he's ever. His, <laughs> his, anyway, his, and then he'll be like, he goes, dude, you know we have the same audience, right? And I go, no, we fucking don't. Hold on, let me see, right? I, I think I've got the video. I think I found it. I think it's a, it's not the full thing that I need, but this is going to give you a gist of the fully loaded thing because it sounded, oddly enough, the clip sounds, the clip looks exactly how Bert describes it. So either you're into it or you're not. But let's see, I think it was fully loaded. That's it, fully loaded cruise. It's one of the first couple of videos I saw there. There we go. Here it is. Here it is. You see this video? This is from like, I think a couple of weeks ago. Let me see if I can find it here. What's, who's it by? Someone called, Wild, there we go. Wild Up Adventures. This one. Look what look at what this fully loaded cruise looks like. They're doing a belly flop um challenge thing, I'm assuming. But just look at it. Look at the mass of people on the cruise, the pool, the I don't know, man. This makes me want to vomit in my mouth. <laughs> Can you imagine the amount of first aid kits they have to have in this cruise? The amount of people that are in, that are busting their knees, walking upstairs, drunk. Can you imagine trying to get a night's sleep on that cruise? Can you imagine trying to sleep, trying to turn down, trying to catch some shut eye, right? Or trying to, or just enjoy a sandwich <laughs> quietly. It's never going to happen. Everybody there looks like they're on fucking level 100. Don't get me wrong. It looks kind of fun. But it also looks like the type of place where if you're not on that sort of time, you will hate every minute of it. You know, there is no in between. You either you go looking to turn up or you just don't go because you're on a cruise. Once you're out on sea, you ain't going back. I've asked Miss Pat on the mic. Let's take him home, Mama. Let's take him home. Take him home, dear. Yeah. I need you to let him. I love him. I love him. Don't get me wrong. It's a really cool thing. I think it's a really cool thing because it shows that Burt's actually got like a real audience, like a real fan base. It's not like, like his views, you can tell are not fake views, right? He's not bot in views. He's not faking engagement. Like he's got people out there that absolutely love him, right? The, to the point where they will buy a ticket to go on a cruise to watch him perform. Like that is a sign of somebody that is really, really connected with their, with his audience base. So, so I, I kind of like that side of things because he's cultivated that over years, over time, over, you know, blood, sweat and tears. But God damn it, bro. This is why sometimes I understand also why Bert has a lot of fear around quitting drinking because these are his fans. These are his day ones. These are his hardcore fans, the ones that are willing to pay whatever the price was for this cruise. And, you know, it's one thing even buying a ticket, another thing turning up, um, having a good time, buying merch, drinking, eating, all this fucking good shit. So if he quits, maybe in his head he thinks he's going to lose all these people. So, and you know how Bert is. I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to let anybody down. All this sort of shit. So I can understand why that all works into his head, why he doesn't want to quit. Because, you know, essentially, these are the guys that have given him the life that he lives now. He's appreciative of it in some ways. He obviously enjoys it. But there's also probably that fear of, like, if he quits and he becomes a different person, 
those people won't come along the don't won't go on the journey with him maybe because he's not going to be the fun guy anymore because like he says all the time every time he's out people are always offering him shots always want to buy him drinks blah, blah 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 so that's a big part of his identity of his kind of image and shit but i couldn't imagine a worse place to be i'm not gonna lie i couldn't imagine a worse place to be but yeah um bert and tom are on a bit of a rocky road there according to two days to try so big up him